Thank you. Thank you. You got to like that. So how about a big hand for our MCs, Frick and Frack? <laughs> All right, I'm here to talk to you today about a project that we started very early this year called Athens. But first, about me. Like they mentioned, I'm working as a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. And here's other things that you can go find if you care. This talk is online, cda.ms slash capital B, and then the number six, capital B six. And you can follow along at home if you want, or share it with your parents, your friends, your neighbors. It's big stuff. So we're going to talk about Athens. Athens in Greece was the center of knowledge during the classical period, which is generally considered to be 200, or 300 to 200 BC. I started this talk with a whole lot of Athens theming, and I dropped that after this slide. So don't worry about the Greek stuff. It goes away quickly. So Athens is an umbrella project. There are several projects underneath Athens. I literally went online and said, project name generator, and it gave me Athens-Brass, and that was the name of the project when I started it. Uh, because you can't have a secret project without a good code name. And Athens Brass worked because it's a good code name. Better than some of the other ones we've done at Microsoft. Athens is a caching proxy server, among many other things. And it's one that you can run inside your firewall. You can run it inside your home. You can run it in your office. You can run it anywhere. It's also a specification, and I think that's probably more important than anything else that um, we created a specification that you can use to make your own proxies and talk among the projects and services that Athens will be running. Athens is about trust. How do you trust the packages that you're downloading on the internet? How do you know that there isn't code that's injected in them? How do you know you should use the modules that are provided by the proxy? And it's also about decentralized verification. The last thing that we want to do is create NPM or rubygems.org where something can go down and keep you from building. We want decentralized services, we want federated services, and we want services that aren't controlled by a single entity. And it's also just a code name. So what's in it for you? Why should you pay attention? Why do you care about Athens? Number one, repeatable builds. You can get a build using your proxy server, whether or not GitHub is up. You can have builds whether or not GitLab is up. You can have builds whether or not the internet is up if your proxy server is running inside your firewall. Every time. And maybe, more importantly to all of you, is the fact that you will have proxy servers closer to you than GitHub is right now. Athens is also a specification. Athens specifies how the Go command will communicate with proxy servers. It's a specification for module validation. And it's a specification for a protocol of trust. So the Go command, there's already proxy support in the Go command. If you use the Go proxy environment variable today, you can point it at a proxy that, specifies, uh, that follows the Go proxy specification, and the Go command will try to use that proxy to fulfill your Go get requests. Module validation is the key to making Athens work. There's a go.sum file in the root of your project, right next to the go.mod file and it contains a hash of the module contents. It's a future-proof design so that we can change the hashing algorithm in the future if there's a new hash that's faster, better, more secure. And the modules will be downloaded, validated, and signed by a new concept called notaries. Just like in the system of notary publics where we trust people to validate signatures, validate identification on legal documents, 
we're going to trust entities to validate and sign Go modules. So a notary will download and verify the hash and then sign that module. The signature states that the contents of the module match the sum file and it has been certified to be unmodified. It's a certified correct package. Notaries are going to be completely independent. So we won't have a notary service that is only run by Google or only run by Microsoft. Anyone can run a notary service. There will be a key set of trusted notaries built into the system. But more important than anything else, anyone can serve as a notary. So a signed module file will contain a certificate. Publishers will collect those certificates from notaries, and they'll be published at an API endpoint at slash log. Interested subscribers can query that log API, and they can query it using date filters or pattern matching filters. Why is that important? The idea that discovery today in Go modules is really difficult. Godoc.org uses a lot of really crazy trolling to go out and find what packages are out. But in the future, you'll be able to query these log endpoints and discover all new versions of any module that participates in the system. So now we have a system for discovery, but that system is federated. There's no central source of authority, so it doesn't matter if something goes down. So notaries plus publishers together make discoverability. There's a lot of new concepts here, the idea of notaries and publishers. We created them as separate entities, but initially the notaries and publishers will be together running on the same system. Together they allow you to run an authenticated proxy. This means that when you type go get and go get a module, you're going to be able to ensure that the module that is downloaded is the same module that was created and tagged in your version control system. If it's not, it'll produce an error. The Go command won't allow you to download that module if the, if the certificates don't match what was signed. And maybe more important than that, you get to choose which signing keys you trust. None of the pieces of this system are dictated to you. This is a community system by the community for the system, or for the community. That means that if tomorrow Microsoft turns evil, Google turns evil, DigitalOcean turns evil, just delete that key from your uh, configuration file. Now you don't have to trust anymore. You get to choose who you trust. So the Go command will support authenticated proxies in the immediate future. Those trusted keys will be stored locally in a file called go.key. That file will be defaulted in the Go root, and you can override it in your Go path. Those keys will be weighted, and they have to combine to a 1.0 score in order for the Go command to trust the key. So that means if we have an example key file like this one, this specifies three different authenticated proxy servers and three different key weights. The bottom three each have a 0.5 weight. That means there have to be two signatures on that module file in order for it to be trusted by your Go command locally. Two different independent notaries have to certify that that module file has been unaltered. You can change the weights yourself. You can decide that locally, I trust Google for 1.0. Then only one of them would be required. But the signatures have to add up to a sum of one or more in order for the module to be used locally. You note the top one, my company, with a signature, you can run your own signing notary inside your firewall. You can sign your own modules. You can sign and verify other modules. All of the code's open source. You don't have to use any external provider at all in order to use this system. But there will be public proxies available, geographically distributed proxy servers close to where you are all across the globe, and they'll be on public, dependable infrastructure. Google Cloud, Azure, DigitalOcean, lots of providers across the globe. 
including CDN providers. So those modules, once they're signed, will be on a CDN. They'll be fast and easy for you to download in Singapore, just as they would be in San Francisco. My favorite part is that you can run your own proxy inside your firewall. Running a proxy locally means that you have complete control over what happens inside your corporation. A proxy system allows for including and excluding of modules by glob. So you can prevent undesirable modules from being used. If you have a policy that modules need to be approved by an architecture committee or a security review committee before you use them in your company, you can include them on the include and exclude lists. For example, you can use exclude github.com slash go buffalo slash star if you don't trust code that Mark is behind. <laughs> or if your company is really tight with security, you can include anything at GitHub or exclude anything at GitHub. You have the power and the control to do that with the proxy. So let's do a demo. This demo didn't work an hour ago, but it does now. And that was PebCAC. You guys know what PebCAC is? Problem exists between keyboard and chair. That was me. So what I've got here is the code. Is that view visible? Make it a little bigger. What I've got here is the code for Athens, and this is the proxy server. So I'm just going to type Buffalo Dev, because apparently I trusted Buffalo when we started this project. And honestly, I know there, there's a lot of talk in the Go world about whether or not you should use frameworks for web development. I love Buffalo so much, I can't even thank Mark enough. So now we're running a Buffalo app with some background workers that act as our proxy server. I have a directory outside of my Go path. So I'm just in my home directory with a, a let's put that up at the top. I'm in a home directory slash blue. And my Go environment has my Go path listed at B Kettleson Go. So we're outside the Go path. That's the important thing to notice here. I have a main.go file and a clean.sh file. The clean.sh file removes any cached modules that I might have. It removes the binary. Let's just show you what it does. It just cleans everything to make sure that we're actually hitting the proxy server when we do a go get. So I've got a main file that includes one external dependency, kr pretty, and then it uses that to print hello world. So let's create a new Go module. We're, remember, we're outside the Go path, so it has no idea what my module lives at. So we'll type go mod dash init dash module, and then my module's Go path. And it created a new go.mod file. If we look at the file, it's just got my module name in it doesn't know anything about dependencies yet because we haven't tried to build. So let's look at our Buffalo output real quick and type go build. Notice that it says it's downloading things. And when we go back to the Buffalo output, you can see that the proxy server handled the requests to do go gets for uh, pretty and its dependencies, which are text PTY at version 0.1.0. So back in Visual Studio Code, the Go module file shows the requirement for pretty, and it's got the hashes for each of the modules. And I mentioned that the hashes were future-proof. H1 means hash protocol one. In, that, in this case, it's SHA sum. So we can have a hash two in the future. And then if we hit blue, it types hello world. Outside the Go path, we're using modules. But more importantly, we only fetch them from GitHub on the first build. If we run go, go build again, it's nearly instant. The proxy served up the request. And we didn't hit GitHub the second time. 
So not only do you have a local cache of modules, but we also have the proxy serving them as well. Pretty exciting. I can tell by your excitement. <laughs> so Athens as a project is designed to be decentralized, bless you, federated, and independent. This is a central goal for the entire project. Services are decentralized and independent. Signed packages means you don't have to worry about man in the middle. Nobody is changing the code that you depend on. Even if the code disappears from GitHub, left pad, go bin data, it still will work. Once that package is published, it won't ever be removed from Athens unless there is a DMCA takedown request. Only extreme circumstances are going to get published code removed from the proxy servers. All of this is open source, including the protocols. If you want to build on top of this, you can. All of these external services are interfaces. You can use your favorites. Athens already includes code to use GCP and Azure. There's code to use a local file system, local databases, or cloud databases. You just pick which one you want to run when you run locally. So if you want to implement a new database provider, it's an interface. It's a tiny package to implement. It's all open source. The protocols that we used to build the communications between the notaries, the publishers, the subscribers, and the proxies are all going to be added to the Golang repo as a proposal. That means that this is an open specification that anyone can participate in. Today, we have an idea of what that proposal will look like. Probably in the next week, we'll add the proposal. You can come to GitHub, look at the proposal, and participate in the process. See what we did. See what you might want to change. Because it's an open specification, anyone can participate. And anyone can pull the data out of those protocols and build something new and exciting. That's why this protocol is important, because it allows us to build future tools on top of this. Maybe one thing we want to do is add code provenance. If you sign your commits in GitHub, then a system we build on top of Athens might be able to tell you the code provenance for every line of code in a binary that you build. If you can't prove the provenance, we won't build it. That's a system that you could build on top of Athens with just a little bit of extra code. You can add your ideas on top of Athens. You can create code quality tools that subscribe to the feeds from the publishing servers and run code quality on top of them. You can get metrics. How many downloads have there been for this particular package? You could even run your own vanity domain server on top of the proxy. Why not? In order to run the notaries, we're creating a foundation so that no one company can take the notaries down and make the system stop working. We have multiple companies that have promised to participate, and the members of that foundation will host the notaries and the certificate servers and groups of geographically distributed public proxies. This allows your notaries to live without a single point of failure. If I quit Microsoft, if Google decides they don't like Go anymore, the notaries still live because the foundation is funded for the future. We have Microsoft and Google already committed and a handful of others right on the line for signing on. So what's next? The foundation is being legally formed today. The notaries will be coming online very soon. The public proxies will be available for you to test very soon. And the proposal will be submitted next week to go for everybody to review. Athens is open source, and we absolutely would love you to come and contribute. It's at gomods slash Athens on GitHub, and we have tons of work left to do, especially documentation, which right now is completely empty, except for how to contribute, how to build. So before we can release it, we need to document well. We've had 21 contributors 
Only a small handful of those are from Microsoft. Externally, most of our contributors are across the globe. We have contributors from Greece. We have contributors from uh, Yugoslavia. We have contributors from China. We have contributors from Japan, Europe, the US, everywhere. We cut our first release last week, so you can actually download a binary and run the proxy locally today. I want to thank and give credit to a stack of people. First of all, Russ Cox has worked incredibly closely with the community on this. He wants to make sure that we do the right thing for the community and the right thing for Go. And we've used this as a model for community participation in the Go project in the future. Aaron Schlesinger is the community lead for this project. He manages all of the technical teams and runs weekly meetings, uh, is constantly living in the Slack channel and merging pull requests, encouraging contributors, writing blog posts, doing a fantastic job of that. Paul Jolly, are you in the room? Raise your hand. Paul. Paul has done more work than anybody I can think of debugging modules in Go. More GitHub issues, more pull requests, more debugging than anybody I can think of. You deserve a great big round of applause. <laughs> and then all of the Go dependency projects that existed before, Dep, Glide, GoVendor, all of them, have paved the way for this project. And we hope that this project will pave the way for the future. Nothing that we do is the final version. We're always going to improve. There will always be something better. And we're excited to be in the middle of that process. The 21 contributors we've had across the globe, thank you to all of them. And of course, Buffalo and Mark Bates. It was not a risk at all to build a public proxy server on Buffalo. And it's been delightful to use Buffalo for our proxy. We're very excited for that. You can reach me on Twitter. GitHub, and our project is at GoMods on GitHub. We'd love to come have you participate, open pull requests, run the proxy locally, break things. Um, come join us. It's a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And thank you to uh, the organizers for putting together yet another awesome GoForCon UK.